Welcome back, it's me Lou. Alright, so today is going to be a short toy haul video. We're going to take a look at some recent acquisitions. Alright, to begin, uh, first off we have WWE Superstars, NWO Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Um, I got this at my local Walmart. Uh, so of all the WWE Superstar figures that were released, this was a figure I wanted the most. Um, I have such fond memories of Hollywood Hogan uh, way back when in WCW and Nitro. Uh, when I heard about this figure, I was kind of stoked because I already have the um, the WWE Master or Masters of the WWE Universe uh, Hulk Hogan that came. I think it was like was like a came with I think um, the Snake Mountain. Uh, wrestling ring. I think it was a two pack with Stone Cold. I have that figure, but I really wanted um, the straight up, you know, official, like full on wrestling version of Hollywood Hulk Hogan, not one of the crossover versions. Uh, great looking figure. As you can see, he has the tearaway uh, tank top with the New World Order logo. He has the Hollywood bandana, um, the sunglasses. He has the tinted beard, and of course, he has the Hogan tan. Um, he also has uh, motorcycle gloves, and it's just a great figure. He has the lightning on the side of the tights. Uh, for me, even though I grew up in the 80s, and um, you know, I was introduced to like you know old school like yellow and red Hulk Hogan. I think my favorite version of the Hulk Hogan character was probably Hollywood uh, when he was full on heel and on Nitro. For me, that was kind of like the peak. That's when I really enjoyed uh, Hogan the most. And for me to have this figure, you know, it's very special, and I think it's awesome. Um, I love the vintage uh, card back. It looks cool. You know, there's Hogan in the background. And then this is a cool throwback to the old, like, Remco figures. Or just old figures in general from the 80s. You know, it's just black and white card art. And then here's the lineup of figs. Um, I have Honky Tonk Man and Flair. Uh... Here's the flare. Have that. Let me grab Honky real quick. And then here's Honky Tonk Man. The only one I've passed up on uh, is the Bray Wyatt. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I've heard this said by fans before. It's kind of the Bray Wyatt figure is kind of pointless because it doesn't even capture like a memorable version of this character, and it doesn't really fit in with this line to begin with since most of these wrestlers in the line are kind of like you know uh vintage or throwback characters so that's my hogan all right so up next um in my little pile of figures i picked up recently we have this this is marvel legends x-men siren and as you notice <laughs> it's missing a head uh, so some horrible, horrible person uh, for whatever reason. I've seen this before, and I know for a while it was actually a trend, like a year ago during lockdown, is that you know people would just rip the heads off of action figures just for the hell of it. But in this case, you know, I have a feeling that whoever took the head off a of siren just wanted the head, you know, probably for a custom or something. Uh, but I bought this figure, you know, knowing it was missing a head because at the time I bought this three weeks ago. And three weeks ago, I thought um, I would have all the figures I would need to build the custom, um, not custom, the build a figure bone breaker. And then I'm like, all right, I'm short of two figures because at, at the time I had the figures pre-ordered on Amazon and they were all supposed to come three weeks ago. But then lo and behold, you know, all of a sudden I'd get like either cancellation notices or stuff was going to be delayed. But at the time I thought I was going to get all these figures like in, like in one week. But the only figure I didn't pre-order was Siren because I thought I'd be able to find her in the stores. So one morning I went out. I'm like, okay, I need Siren. I went to my Target. And for some reason, all of a sudden, all the Sirens were gone. This was the only one left on the shelf. And then it was missing a head, but I really wanted the Build-A-Figure piece. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to buy this and then I'll make use of the figure. You know, if you watch my channel, you'll know that I dabble in custom figures. And I think this is a great base body, and I've already dug out a couple of different heads I might experiment with to try to make some sort of custom. So we'll see what happens and what I do with this. I have a couple of ideas, but I don't want to really talk about it until I know I could pull it off. So we're going to save this figure for sometime in the near future for a custom. 
but um, I do have a complete figure with the head. So be on the lookout for a review on that. Um, hopefully as of today, I'll have all the figures in the lineup. Um, I got a notice from Amazon that I'm getting Maggot today. So I'll have the, the complete wave. So look forward to reviews on all these figures if I haven't posted them up already. And then I'll do a full review on Bone Breaker, which I'm really excited about. All right, so next up, one thing I picked up at my local Walmart also is AEW Chris Statlander. Uh, this look is already outdated. Um, if you're a fan of AEW and you've been watching the show, her she's kind of dropped the whole alien gimmick. And her look's a lot more updated. It's a little bit more serious in tone. Uh, nowadays, she's more uh, dressed up in a lot of black, a lot of darker colors. I think she even wears like a leather jacket. It's really cool. Um, but even though this figure is outdated in terms of her outfit, um, I'm very fond of this version of Chris Statlander. Um, I was first introduced to Chris Statlander maybe like, I want to say four years ago. Um, so I live in the Chicagoland area. We got a lot of pro wrestling that comes through town, and I mean a lot. Uh, one of the promotions that comes through Chicago often is Shimmer, and it's um, an all-women uh, promotion. And if you're familiar with Shimmer, you know, like any of the big uh, female uh, wrestling stars that you see nowadays, you know, chances are they got a lot of exposure wrestling for Shimmer. Uh, when Shimmer is in the Chicagoland area, they wrestle out of the Berwyn Eagles um, uh, club. And it's kind of like a small, like, hall. And uh, this that's where I was first introduced to Chris Statt. You know, she was wrestling on the card. And um, I don't know, I've always been a fan of her. So I'm very, very stoked to get this figure. And lastly, on my um, short little toy haul, I picked up this second hand. Um, I already have this in my collection, but I wanted one, uh, another one because the first one I got, I actually customized it and repainted it. Uh, so it looked a little bit better. So the custom that I did, I repaint, so all the gray plastics, I repainted chrome and then I kind of redid the, the body armor. So to actually have like the red flames on the armor like Optimus has. Uh, maybe one day I'll dig that custom out and I'll share it with you. But the reason why I bought this is because I kind of wanted just a stock figure. Um, I bought this figure loose, secondhand, at uh, Wax Packs, Records, and Toys, located in Roselle, Illinois. If you're ever in the Chicagoland area, check them out. I love this place. So this is a toy they've actually had in the store for like years. And I kept on passing up on buying it. But then I found like this caved in because I think I got it um, for really like, I think like 12 or $15. Uh, the one accessory he's missing is his sword, but otherwise this thing was in pretty pristine shape. You know, it wasn't beat the hell. It looked like whoever owned this beforehand must have been a collector because it didn't have a lot of signs of like excessive transformation or like play use. Um, this figure came out, I want to say, which movie was that? It was Transformers Age of Extinction. So when that movie came out some many years back, uh, it was kind of special because um, that year during the Super Bowl, they had the, the trailer for Transformers Age of Extinction. And then Hasbro, they said that you know throughout the day they were going to make a special announcement during the Super Bowl after the trailer aired. So when the, after the trailer aired... Uh, Hasbro said, hey, you know what, um, in, in celebration of the new movie coming out and the trailer, uh, we're going to make available um, this Amazon exclusive, which was this guy right here. This is a leader class Optimus Prime from Age of Extinction. And what's interesting about this figure is that this is a leader class figure. And some of you Transformer fans or like collectors, you know, if you've been in the game long enough, you'll remember the period of time where like Hasbro... Uh, they'd release like certain figures, uh, for example, like the Transformers Prime line. Uh, they'd release almost like two versions of the same character, but they, they'd either be like uh, the releases would either be staggered by like so many months, or they'd come out at the same time. But there'd be one figure that'd be called First Edition. So it w what was interesting with this is that uh, when this movie came out, Hasbro released two leader class Optimus Primes. And they were completely different molds altogether. Uh, they're roughly the same size, the same height, 
but they were completely different. Each one had different transformations. And since they were at that certain scale, they're both called leader class. But I believe the Amazon exclusive, which we're looking at here, was might have been called the first edition. So the first, this version is a little bit different than the other one. Uh, the other one, I mean, they both suffer from too much kibble. And when I say kibble, that means like after you transform it into the robot, there's always like excessive parts that just make it look too bulky. For example, there's the backpack here. Uh, this one, you know, unfortunately, all the backpack made this one kind of like cumbersome. And the other version of Leader Class Prime that was released to public retail, most of those, uh, that figure's design, it was kind of um, bulky also, but all the kibble pieces were like in different areas, like on his legs and his shoulders. So that was equally like a cumbersome figure also. It was odd that Hasbro would release, you know, two versions of Optimus Prime under the same leader class label, but having completely different molds. And my theory behind that was, um, you know, chances are during the prototype stage, they probably came down to like two prototype figures that they liked a lot. And I had a feeling that they felt that both figures were probably marketable. That's why they both went out to, um, you know, to retail. But this was the Amazon exclusive. Uh, it's a nice big figure. You know, Transformer fans, you know, they're hard to please. You know, if one, you know, people always talk about how toxic, like, the Star Wars fan base is. But, you know, the Transformer fan base is equally divided and just as toxic in certain circles. And especially with some of the toys that are more so based off of the Michael Bay uh, versions of the character. Like, I love this figure. I understand there's all sorts of weird faults with it. You know, especially if you look at it from a profile view. There's this giant backpack that looks horrible. It almost looks like he's lugging around like a bed frame on his back. But, you know, for me, it's articulated. It transforms really nice. The quality's there. Uh, it's durable enough that a child could, like, you know, play with it. And, you know, it's, it's, it's just a nice toy overall. I think it does a nice balance of being a decent figure and just being an excellent toy. Um, I would transform it for you on camera right now, but my history uh, and like with transforming toys on live video is horrendous. You know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I sat here for like uh, half an hour trying to figure this guy out. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. I'll just try real quick. See if I could do it. If I can't, I'll give up early enough, but uh, we'll see what I can do. Um, uh, the nice thing with this Optimus 2 is actually based off of a real cab design. Uh, the company is Western Star. They actually they even have a credit right there. Um, Alright, I did this once after I bought the toy just to make sure that it wasn't broken, but I'm not sure if I could pull it off today. Let's just see if I could. Alright, this comes down. This flips up. Right, something here rotates. What rotates again? That's the one thing I loved about the Transformer toys of my youth. You know, the transformations were a lot simpler and they felt a little bit more intuitive where some of these transformations for these newer figures, it's kind of like a, not that it's a mess, but it's like, it really is like trying to figure out a puzzle.
All right, I think I'm doing something wrong here. I can't get this get my feet rolling. Um, you ever go to like a flea market and there's always that box of like old used transformer toys that like a seller might have and they're just broken and missing pieces and i always have a feeling it's because it's, it's situations like this kids can't figure out the transformation and then stuff this breaks apart or i had this figured out earlier but i can't get the piece to lock in but you kind of get the point you know this folds in tabs in for whatever reason i can't get the legs to tab in all the way but I don't know, I think this is the best I could do for now. Alright, the one leg came in, it worked. Alright, there we go. Just gotta tab it together. Yeah, so you get the point. I, I came close. So it's gonna transform. I just couldn't pull this all the way back. But as you can see, it's a nice version of the Western Star Cab. And <laughs> that's pretty much it. Um, this video is going to fall apart. So we're just going to leave this alone and wrap this up. Yeah, so once again, my name is Lou. Uh, thanks for checking this out. Um, if you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, subscriber, uh, thank you so much for your continued support. So until the next video, be safe, take care of yourself, buy lots of toys, and most importantly, be happy. And I'll see you at the next one. All right, later.